ICE has proven to be one of the greatest preservation boxes in history. I can't wait to see it. It's traveled all this distance. From the skeleton-filled Indian Lake to the century-old Surgeon Notebook, join us in opening treasure chests filled with invaluable antiques as we explore the 20 most incredible things found frozen in ice. <coughs> frozen Cave Lion Cub A cub of a cave lion was found in the Siberian Arctic and it looked very much like it was peacefully asleep and a slight nudge would get it up and roaring. But this cub was older than those who found it, thousands and thousands of years older. Literally, it had been frozen for 28,000 years. But just like vampires, the cub didn't look old and dreary. Instead, the little feline's golden fur remains unscathed, and its teeth, skin, soft tissues, and organs are astonishingly intact. And its claws are remaining sharp all through the centuries. The Siberian Simba, called Sparta, was found alongside another cub named Boris in Russia's Far East. They belong to an extinct species of cave lions that roam the wildlands of the Northern Hemisphere. Now here's where it gets fascinating. The scientists assumed Boris and Sparta were siblings because they found one a stone's throw away from the other. But after further research, they discovered there was a whopping age gap between them. Boris has been precisely dated to 43,449 years old, using radiocarbon dating. It's just incredible, but Sparta is the true star and has been described as the most incredibly preserved Ice Age creature ever found. Every single part of its body, down to its whiskers, endured the ravage of time. It remains a mystery how the two-month-old cubs met their icy demise in those years. There are no signs of them being victims of predator attacks being wounded or anything. So we can only wonder how the ancient baby lions said their last goodbyes. Forest under a glacier A glacier is a slow-moving river of ice created when years of snowfall accumulate on mountains and slowly compact into ice. Because of the colossal weight of the ice, it slides really slowly down slope over the course of many years. Lately, most of Alaska's glaciers are retreating and forests from warmer times in history are being discovered. This is due to factors like low winter precipitation, warm summer temperatures, and high pressure systems. At the bottom of the crevasse is a stunning sight, an enchanting forest. The ice overhead allows filtered sunlight to penetrate, casting an otherworldly glow on the moss-covered trees and the frozen ground. The Mendenhall Glacier is a massive river of ice that flows into a lake for almost 50 years, stumps and logs have been appearing from under the glacier, but now something even more exciting is happening. Researchers from the University of Alaska Southeast have noticed a lot more trees popping up. And get this, they're standing upright. Some even have their roots and bark intact. How amazing is that? It's like a frozen forest in time under the ice. Most times, people find chunks and bits of the trees all around the place but to find the whole forest intact is so cool. The trees have been identified as either spruce or hemlock because of the breadth of the trunks and because they're the types of trees growing in the region today. But is this as exciting as discovering an unpolluted lake? Let's see, Lake Vostik. Lake Vostik is the oldest, most immaculate lake in the world. It's never been disturbed by mankind, but we're not sure it'll stay that way for long. It's one of more than 70 lakes found under the Antarctic ice sheet. It's estimated to be 35 million years old. As expected, the freshwater lake that's been sealed off from the world for millions of years has piqued the curiosity of scientists, some of which have dedicated their lives to studying it. We'll tell you some of the things they found. One, it's one of the world's largest lakes, 48 kilometers wide, 225 kilometers long, and 914 meters deep. NASA is super intrigued by this incredible discovery. They're so interested that they want to drill into it. Why? Well, it's all part of their grand plan for future missions to places like Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Europa is covered in ice, but NASA believes there's a whole ocean of liquid water hiding beneath it. They think there might be life in that extraterrestrial ocean, so they want to use it as a test run to explore and see what they can find. See why we said the lake wouldn't be undisturbed for long? In fact, 
a team of scientists from the U.S., Russia, and France already drilled an ice core at Russia's Vostok station, right near the lake. But they stopped drilling about 120 meters above the estimated water surface because they didn't want to risk contaminating it. So they played it safe. To keep the hole from freezing up, Russian scientists have been pouring diesel fuel into it. But here's the tricky part. Now they have too much drilling fluid in there and it can't be safely pumped out. Oops, Lost Squadron World War II. Let's start with a short story. In July 1942, the Lost Squadron, a unit consisting of two B-17 bomber planes and six P-38 fighters, landed on a remote Greenlandic. It was a dark and fateful night on July 15, 1942, when a daring group of pilots embarked on a mission they would never forget. Two B-17 bombers and six P-38 fighters took off from Greenland, filled with anticipation for their journey to Great Britain. Facing a thick blanket of clouds and dwindling fuel, the pilots were forced to abandon their plan and make a risky emergency landing on the icy caps of Greenland. The squadron made emergency landings one after another. Days turned into nights, and hope began to fade as the crew faced the harsh reality of their situation. However, after nine long days on the desolate glacier, in southeastern Greenland, a ray of hope emerged on the horizon. A special Air Force unit arrived at the crash site, determined to rescue the stranded squadron. But the most interesting detail of this story is the planes were abandoned to remain forever entombed beneath layers of ice, lost to the world. In 1992, however, the world realized destiny had a different plan for one of the planes. One of the P-38s, Glacier Girl, was discovered, rescued and restored. Yup, she was fixed and restored to flying condition. Her discovery restored the faith of the scientists. They returned to the site and found another P-38 called Echo. So it's two down, six to go. Good thing no lives were lost in their entire ordeal. It's a different ball game in the Indian Himalayas. Lake of Skeleton Rupkin Lake is situated really high up on Trizzle, a super tall mountain in India, and it's about 16,500 feet above sea level. The lake is home to the bones of a puzzling group of Eastern Mediterranean people that traveled to the Indian Himalayan site around 220 years ago. Imagine stumbling upon a place known as the Lake of Skeletons. Back in 1942, a British forest ranger made this chilling discovery. Throughout the year, the lake remains frozen, but when the snow melts, the skeletons become visible, some shockingly well preserved. With bits of flesh still attached, about 600 to 800 sets of skeletal remains have been found so far. But who are these people? Where did they come from? How did they end up dead? Here are some of the most popular theories. One hypothesis suggests that the remains belong to an Indian king, his wife, and their attendants, who perished in a blizzard nearly 870 years ago. Another theory spins a different story. It suggests that some of the skeletons could be from Indian soldiers who dared to invade Tibet back in 1841. But their ambitions were crushed. That doesn't sound too bad, but there's more. Local folklore tells of a deadly hailstorm created by Nanda Devi, the second highest mountain in India, that claimed the lives of the people that passed by the lake. According to previous investigations, most of these individuals were not your average height. They were tall and were mostly middle-aged adults, around 35 to 40 years old. If only the skeletons could tell their stories. Oil and wood feeders. Back in the early 1900s, Two adventurous explorers named Robert F. Scott and Ernest Shackleton built these awesome huts in Antarctica's chilly Ross Sea region. These huts were like cozy homes for up to 48 brave men who embarked on expeditions and scientific missions to the South Pole. And guess what? These historic huts are still around today, thanks to the Antarctic Heritage Trust in New Zealand, which takes care of them. These hugs are a magnet for scientists, ecotourists, and history enthusiasts who can't get enough of the incredible legacy left behind by those early Antarctic adventures. In there, you'll find all sorts of fascinating things like old newspaper clippings, cans of food, and even clothing left behind by the brave explorers. But these huts aren't in tip-top shape anymore. Over the years, they've taken a beating from the harsh Antarctic conditions. 
Imagine rotting planks and wooden crates covered in mysterious black speckles. That's not a good sign, right? That's when the conservationist stepped in and said, hey, we need an expert. They turned to Robert Blanchett, the fungi guru, for consultation. Now you might be wondering, what do fungi have to do with decaying huts? Well, here's the deal. No one had ever found any wood munching fungi native to Antarctica before Blanchett came along. And why would they? Fungi usually prefer warmer climates. And let's face it, Antarctica is a frozen land with no trees in sight for millions of years. Blanchett found three types of fungi that were totally unique, unlike anything anyone had seen before. This is a testament to the incredible wonders we can still uncover in the frozen corners of our planet. Lubba the Mammoth Lubba is believed to have been found after her snowy grave melted during the spring and her remains washed up on a riverbank. When we say remains, we don't mean her carcass or anything like that. She was pretty much intact. Seeing her for the first time was an incredible experience, according to paleontologist Professor Adrian Lister. She was discovered in 2007 by a Siberian deer herder and was 130 centimeters tall, weighing 50 kilograms. The baby mammoth died 42,000 years ago, but you'll think she was born last month. She looked a lot like elephant relatives with wrinkled, leathery skin. The hair, which, which she had those years ago, had eroded away, leaving just a few tufts. Her only defect was her missing tail, probably gnawed off by animals. Her body also looks a little deflated, which is a result of being buried under the weight of all that ice for thousands of years. The researchers found clay in her trunk, and they believe it may have been the cause of her death. They believe she suffocated from it while getting water or crossing the river. The mud is also responsible for keeping her in near-perfect condition. We picture her stopping in her tracks, choking on clay, while the rest of the herd and her mother, who had just breastfed her, stand there unable to save her. Ice ship. There's a massive object out there measuring a whopping 400 feet. And guess what? It looks remarkably similar to a luxurious cruise ship, complete with chimneys and rows of windows. Pretty cool, right? The discovery set the internet on fire with a bunch of wild conspiracy theories. Some people are convinced this mysterious boat is somehow linked to a top-secret Nazi base lurking in the Arctic. Others speculate that it's designed to whisk away world leaders in times of global crisis. These netizens are really imagining the most. The excitement reached new heights when a video of this peculiar finding popped up on YouTube, courtesy of a user who goes by the name Mr. MBB333. With an impressive subscriber count of 400,000, this account likes to call themselves the Earth Watchmen. In the video, he shares his eagle-eyed perspective pointing out that when you look down on this object, it unmistakably resembles the outline of a ship. And with a length of 400 feet, it's hard to not see it as anything other than a ship-like structure. Could it be a massive iceberg with a quirky shape playing tricks on our eyes? The mystery continues, but one thing's for sure, this discovery has definitely captured the attention of the online community. Ancient Organism Meet the Bedelloid Rotifer a tiny multicellular organism that's captured the attention of scientists worldwide. The ancient animal was found by Russian scientists in soil taken from the river Alizea in Russia's region of Yakutia in the far north. The team of adventurous researchers embarked on an expedition armed with a powerful drilling rig. Their mission? To uncover secrets hidden deep within the icy terrain. And boy did they strike gold! During their daring escapade, these intrepid scientists unearthed something truly mind-blowing. Imagine reaching down 11 and a half feet below the frozen ground and pulling out a living organism. Talk about a jaw-dropping discovery. It's usually found in freshwater habits across the world and is known to be able to withstand extreme cold. It could survive for a decade when frozen at negative 20 degrees Celsius. But this case is quite peculiar. It's the animal's longest recorded survival period in a frozen state. It lays in the vast permafrost lands of northeastern Siberia for 24,000 years. After being defrosted in a petri dish, the microscopic organism came back to life and even began to reproduce asexually. This is so incredible, but we're not sure it comes close to discovering a dinosaur species. 
Those things went extinct 65 million years ago. Cold bone dinosaur. The discovery of a new dinosaur species sparks our imagination and ignites our curiosity about the incredible creatures that once roamed our planet. And this is what happened in Greenland when scientists found a long-necked herbivore that lived around 214 million years ago. A name was selected for it in Greenland's indigenous Kalilusit language to honor the local culture. It's called Isi Sanek, which means cold bone. This 13-foot-long dinosaur, whose fossilized remains were unearthed around the freezing ice sheets of Greenland, is believed to have weighed up to one ton and was unearthed by a group of researchers from Germany, Denmark, and Portugal. It all started back in 1994, when a group of adventurous paleontologists from Harvard University stumbled upon something extraordinary in East Greenland. Not one, but two remarkably well-preserved dinosaur skulls. Back then, the researchers had no idea they had stumbled upon a brand new species. They thought that one of the skulls belonged to a well-known dinosaur called Platyosaurus, which roamed the lands of Germany, France, and Switzerland during the Triassic period, approximately 252 to 201 million years ago. Imagine their surprise when years later it was finally revealed that these skulls were actually evidence of an entirely unique dinosaur species now named Cold Bone. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Whatever this creature is, it looks impoverished. But that makes sense considering they found it frozen in ice and what no one was supposed to see. And it may be from centuries ago. The big question now is, what is it? It's too furry to be a dinosaur, so that's canceled. It's what we imagine a lycanthrope will look like. According to legend, a lycanthrope is similar to a werewolf, but unlike a werewolf, the transformation to a wolf can take place at any time and in any place. Well, that's our take. Over to you. What do you think this creature is, and how long do you think it stayed frozen in ice? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to include the hashtag missing topic. 100-year-old notebook of a surgeon. Back in 1911, Captain Scott and his brave crew set off on the Terra Nova expedition hoping to explore the icy wonders of Antarctica. But fate had something else in store for them. Tragically, Scott and two others lost their lives during this daring adventure. Fast forward to a century later, and the melting snow at their Antarctic base has unveiled a fascinating antique, the photographer's notebook. This remarkable artifact was left behind by George Murray Levick, a man of many talents. He was an official photographer, zoologist, and even a surgeon. Levick and a handful of fellow explorers made it back safely, while Scott and two others perished in March 1912 on the Ross Ice Shelf. Levick's notebook, an intriguing treasure titled Welcome Photographic Exposure Record and Diary 1910, contains an incredible collection of photographs he captured during the expedition. But it didn't stop there. The notebook also holds Levick's handwritten notes, chronicling important details like dates, subjects, and exposure information all of which were carefully documented before the crew faced the challenges of a brutal winter. Finding Levick's notebook was like finding a precious puzzle piece that was missing all along from the official expedition record. It opened a window into the incredible story of these brave explorers and their awe-inspiring journeys. Lastly, it's a powerful reminder of our insatiable thirst for discovery and the boundless possibilities that await us in the unexplored corners of our planet. Now, Let's find out about the thousand-year-old piece of clothing, a tunic. It's not every day you find ancient well-preserved clothes. By ancient, we mean about 1,700 years old. This ancient tunic is Norway's oldest piece of clothing, and it looks really good despite being hidden beneath the snow for centuries. As climate change continues to transform our world, the effects are becoming more evident, and one striking consequence is the rapid melting of glaciers like the mighty Lindbreen. We then make discoveries that provide valuable clues, like missing puzzle pieces, enabling us to reconstruct the stories of these communities and understand the intricate bond between humans and our environment. The sheer scale of these emerging artifacts is awe-inspiring. Each artifact is a window into a bygone era, offering glimpses of a world shaped by the ebb and flow of ice. Let's get back to the tunic. It was unearthed when the sun exposed the upper edges of Lindbreen Glacier at the Breheimen National Park in Norway. Very close to where they found the tunic, the scientists also found a woven mitten. Initially, 
They assumed there was a potential connection between the tunic and the mitten, but the radiocarbon dating of the mitten revealed that it originated around 1100 years ago, during the Viking Age. The reason why the tunic was left behind remains a mystery. Maybe it was left behind in a spot where people had set up camp to hunt reindeer. Or did a fierce storm unexpectedly strike the hunting party, leading to their unfortunate demise? No one will ever know. Iron Age Skis This is the story of a remarkable reunion. Two Iron Age skis, separated for a mind-boggling 1300 years, are on the brink of coming back together. It all started when glacier archaeologists made an incredible find back in 2014 at Norway's Diggervarden Ice Patch in Rheinheimen National Park. They stumbled upon the first ski, and boy was it a sight to behold. This ancient relic had miraculously preserved its original binding, making it one of only two skis from over a thousand years ago with such intact features. With this exciting discovery in hand, the archaeology team kept a watchful eye on the ice patch patiently hoping to find its long-lost companion. And lo and behold, in September 2021, their unwavering persistence paid off when they spotted the second ski a mere 16 feet away from its partner's original resting place. Can you feel the thrill? The unearthing of the second ski sent waves of excitement through the team. According to a glacial archaeologist and editor of the Secrets of the Ice website, this ski was even better preserved than the first yet retrieving it proved to be no walk in the park. Initially, they lacked the necessary tools to delicately extract the ski from its icy grip, forcing them to reluctantly leave it behind. As if that wasn't challenging enough, Mother Nature played her part by covering the ski with a thick blanket of snow during an autumn storm, adding another layer of complexity to the recovery mission. But nothing could stop them. With ice axes, gas cookers, and protective materials, they returned to the site, ready to conquer any obstacle. Brushing off the snow was a breeze, but the ice clung to the ski with an iron grip. Undeterred, the team employed ice picks and heated lukewarm water on their gas cookers, using every trick in the book to free the ski from its icy stronghold. Finally, after battling the elements, they triumphantly released the second ski from its frozen embrace, championing one of the most legendary reunions ever. Next a tale that takes us to the far reaches of our solar system. Meteorite from Mars In the quest to unravel the mysteries of Mars, scientists have made an intriguing discovery in the most desolate corner of our own planet, Antarctica. Back in 2003-2004, folks from the U.S. Antarctic Search for Meteorites program hit the jackpot. They found an epic rock in the Miller Range of the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, around 750 kilometers from the South Pole. Weighing in at 715.2 grams, this black rock, aka MIL-03346, is one of the 1,358 meteorites they snagged during their adventure. And get this, it's like a sneak peek into Mars's secrets, right here on our good old planet Earth. This fresh find is now officially part of an exclusive club known as Naclites a group of Martian meteorites named after the very first one discovered in Nakla, Egypt, way back in 1911. It's the seventh recognized member of the special Martian family. Now here's the cool part. Just like its Martian meteorite buddies, MIL-03346 is a legit chunk of the red planet that scientists can thoroughly examine in the lab. It's like a treasure trove of Martian secrets that offers a crucial reality check to help us make sense of it all. So, this rock is not just any rock, it's our key to unlocking the mysteries of the red planet. Lost Mitten Remember when we mentioned a mitten found close to the ancient tunic? Let's talk a little bit more about it. Back in the Viking Age, someone had a major mishap while trekking across the icy terrain of Lindbreen. Yep. They lost their trusty mitten in the vast expanse of snow and ice along the way. Can you imagine their disappointment? But guess what? Fate had other plans. Fast forward a whopping 1100 years and voila! A group of researchers stumbled upon that very same mitten emerging from the melting ice patch. Talk about a crazy twist of fate, it's like a blast from the past, resurfacing to tell its long lost owner, hey I'm back only its long-lost owner doesn't exist anymore. The mitten is a unique piece made by stitching together various sections of textile. 
Surprisingly, it stands as the sole Viking Age mitten ever found in Norway, despite the likelihood of mittens being commonly used during the winter season in that era, just as they are today. The researchers were convinced that the textile pieces of rags they stumbled upon were torn fragments of complete items thanks to the wild winds wreaking havoc on the site. But hold on a second, as they carefully examined and logged these textile pieces at the Museum of Cultural History, a fascinating twist unfolded. They were all different. The threads had varying densities, thicknesses, and weaving techniques. Some even had a distinct sign of intentional cutting instead of natural tearing. That's when it hit them. These textile fragments probably made their way to the lofty mountains as humble rags or leftover scraps, not as complete objects. 3,500-year-old lunchbox. People of old ate, you know, and they had lunchboxes too. And this lunchbox from 3,500 years before was in very good condition as if it had been used a month ago. A group of badass archaeologists led by the University of York embarked on an epic adventure and struck gold. It was found high up in a mind-boggling elevation of 8,700 feet above sea level in the canton of Bern. Now here's the juicy part. The team had their sights set on finding traces of milk residue, imagining a hearty feast eaten by some adventurous hunter or herder. But wait for it. Plot twist, instead of milk, they made a mind-blowing discovery, alkyrosorcanoles, fat-based biomarkers typically associated with whole wheat or rye grain. When it comes to ancient plants, the time hasn't been on the side of archaeologists. They tend to fade away pretty fast, so scientists are diving headfirst into cutting-edge molecular techniques to sniff out these elusive remnants, unveiling brand new insights into the diets and agricultural practices of our long-lost ancestors. Food is nice and all, but not everyone cares about what their forefathers ate. What they do care about is what their forefathers looked like box of photographs. Behind every picture is a story. Hold on to your hats because this is one heck of a discovery. Conservators from the New Zealand Antarctic Heritage Trust stumbled upon a hidden treasure, an old box filled with 22 cellulose nitrate negatives. And get this, these negatives have never seen the light of day. They capture precious moments from the lives of brave Antarctic explorers who ventured into the icy unknown a whopping century ago. It's like stepping back in time and getting an exclusive glimpse into their incredible adventures. Talk about unlocking a hidden chapter of history. Now this is a story. The negatives defied the odds and survived encased in a block of ice, waiting for their moment to shine and reveal the secrets of the Antarctic heroic era. After a century of being frozen in time, the precious negatives underwent a meticulous restoration process. The talented experts delicately separated them cleaned away the mold and strengthened the fragile cellulose nitrate layers. It was no easy task, but their hard work paid off when the negatives were transformed into stunning digital positives, breathing new life into these ancient photographic treasures. According to the Trust Media release, the box of photographs is believed to have been left behind in Captain Scott's hut by the brave souls of Ernest Shackleton's 1914-1917 Ross Sea Party. Anyway, the pictures are pretty cool. Glacier Girl Glacier Girl needs more screen time. So let's give some extra details about the legendary airplane. It all started 65 years ago, during the dark days of World War II. Great Britain was battling Nazi Germany, and the United States, in a heroic move, sent a fleet of warplanes across the treacherous North Atlantic to aid their British allies. Among those brave aircraft was a Glacier Girl a legendary Lockheed P-38F. Now here's where the plot thickens. You already know what happened to the lost squadron, so we'll skip that. Fast forward to the next chapter, a period spanning a whopping 22 years. Enter Roy Schaffner, a true hero in his own right, who took it upon himself to restore Glacier Girl to her former glory and breathe new life into the remarkable aircraft. But her story doesn't end there. There's more. In 2006, Along came Rod Lewis, a bona fide aviation enthusiast and the proud owner of Lewis Energy Group in San Antonio, Texas. This guy had a passion for preserving history and honoring heritage. When he acquired Glacier Girl, he didn't waste a moment. Lewis vowed to see Glacier Girl triumph in the third and final leg of her journey. He knew the price would be steep, both in terms of finances and dedication, but his commitment never wavered. 
He then planned to pilot his Pilatus PC-12, accompanied by Warbit expert Steve Hinton, Flying Glacier Girl. We wish we could tell how that turned out, but that's a story for another time. What we can share now is the story of a baby wolf from years ago. Mummified Pup Picture this, deep in the icy wilderness of Yukon, Canada, a gold miner routine took an extraordinary turn. While water blasting, he attacked a wall of frozen mud, not knowing what awaited beneath. And then, like something out of a magnificent time capsule, emerged a wolf pup that had been locked away in the permafrost for an unimaginable 57,000 years. Just imagine how you'd have felt if you were the miner. They named the pup Zur, a tribute to the natives, and little did they know, this precious find held the key to unlocking secrets about her age, her way of life, and her connection to the wolves of today. Prepare to have your mind blown, because Zur wasn't just any mummified wolf, she was the most complete one ever discovered. Nearly flawless, with only her eyes missing, she left scientists in awe. Julie Meachin, an anatomy expert from Des Moines University, excitedly proclaimed she's practically 100% intact. We can feel her excitement too. But how did this furry time traveler end up frozen in pristine permafrost? Scientists also wonder how she died, but it's impossible to find out. Unless they can get Zur to wake up and share the tragic story of how she died. Iron Age Horse Last but not least on today's list is the Iron Age horse found in a glacier 2,000 meters up in the mountains of Norway. It's a mind-blowing discovery. According to Lars Pilo, the snow archaeology expert at Oppland Council, they've uncovered evidence that horses were used for transportation in the lofty alpine regions. And here's the kicker. They stumbled upon this mind-blowing discovery in areas where they least expected to find any horse-related traces. Pilo supposes that these majestic creatures were put to work by hunters carrying reindeer carcasses down from the mountains. Why? Well, when summer rolls around, those annoying horseflies start bothering the reindeer, driving them to seek refuge on the ice. And you know what that means, the icy terrains transform into prime hunting grounds for resourceful hunters. The astonishing findings include horseshoe and even traces of horse manure preserved in the ice. How many times have you lost your shoe? sock, dog collar, or hat in the snow. Imagine a random archaeologist finding it in the next 2,000 years and writing journals and research papers about it. And as much as it sounds ridiculous, it's kind of exciting. 